it's looking back at it, it's just wild to think of. Um, now we're doing the Team Wolf reboot movie. And, you know, we started that series over 10 years ago. Wow. And then after Team Wolf, like, I had the privilege of going to work on Arrow. And I never knew that I would even be on it on one show. Uh, and let alone two that were really successful. And um, I just feel really lucky. But it definitely was a hard time for me because I was going through a lot of mental health struggles. Yeah. And speaking of that, I mean, it must have been very difficult for you kind of coming to terms with um, your identity and especially under such a spotlight because those shows were huge. Yeah, I definitely had to hide um, who I was from the second I moved to Hollywood. And up until 2016, when I came out of the closet. And in terms of you saying that, you know, you had to hide that, I mean, you know, that's not going to be good for your mental health. And I presume over the years then, it became more and more of a struggle. How did you deal with that? Because, you know, in, in reading about you, you said that, not that you went off the tracks, but you, you, you fell into alcohol and drugs, etc. Is that what happened? Yes, I... I fell into a lot of terrible things. I I was so exhausted from acting 24 hours a day. Yeah. Um, you know, I would leave set and then I'd go become the persona that I created. And it was really hard. And I feel like now uh, I've been sober for over four years and I, I was able to really uh, speak from my heart when I was writing this. And this took three years. Yeah. So I'm really proud of this book. Isn't it incredible to think that, you know, most people who are not in the business, Colton, would think of Hollywood as a, as a place where you can be who you want to be. You can be whatever you want to be. But that's that's not the case. And we're only talking about 2016. We're not talking about 1986 or 96. What, what did you think when you found that out in terms of, I can't be who I, who I want to be, who I am? It was really difficult for me because I was out in high school. I, I had a very rocky coming out and then forced me to leave my small town and then move in with my sister. And, but those last two years of high school were heaven for me. I got to be wholly myself. And then right when I moved to L.A., my first manager uh, made me go to movement classes and speech therapy classes to fix my list and to fix my mannerisms. So I, the acting started the second I got here. Yeah. Wow. So when you say you to fix your lisp and your mannerisms, in what way do yeah. they want you to change and why? Well, the way my face looks uh, and the way my haircut and my, my jawline look, um, they fit a specific type in Hollywood. And so I, if I wanted to work and I wanted my dreams to come true, I, I had to learn how to act like that type. And, um, you know, it, whenever I was able to start working and it, it, it started kind of fading my mannerisms, I thought everything was going to be okay. And then I realized that I was only running further and further from myself yeah. until it ultimately uh, put me in the hospital for a while. So. It's incredible to think that, you know, in order to chase those dreams and, and work as much as you did, you weren't allowed to be yourself. Now, you've put all of these experiences into, into a book and, and you've spoken about yeah. the writing of the book and how difficult that was because, it was, you know, we normally ask, was it cathartic to write a book? Because, but this wasn't, this wasn't a pleasant experience for you. You know, I, I think I was expecting it to be cathartic and I, I watched a bunch of other people's press tours and they were saying that they went to their chalet in the Alps and <laughs> they wrote it on a typewriter and they were just, it was this beautiful experience. Let me tell you, I, I cried for three years every day. I slept two, three hours a night and I sat in this office um, or in my car and just had the hardest time because I, I knew that if I was going to do this, I had to be 100% me and 100% truthful. And that's what I did with this book. And it's a very wild ride. Wow. <laughs> but now that I'm finished with it, and now that the reception's been so positive and so beautiful, 
I, I know that I did the right thing and I, you know, I know that I can continue on the path to really healing. Yeah. You would think that in a Western society, we think we're progressive, we think we're liberal, we think that um, uh, being a queer actor in Hollywood should be no big deal. But I, I suppose being forced to go back into the closet, first of all, and then coming out again, and that whole sort of mental anguish you, you went through, I mean, not only once did you have to go through, but twice. Um, yeah. After writing the book and after kind of putting it all on pen on paper now, do you think you can kind of move on from that trauma? I definitely have have taken big strides. I, I think that it's still difficult because coming out didn't fix a lot of things with my career. Um, it still, it impacted my career pretty um, intensely. But I, I, you know, I, now, I get to be myself now in, in my personal life and... Um, I'm just really thankful that, that that's the case for me. But, you know, there's still a long way that Hollywood has to go. Yeah. Um, now that this year there's the first uh, gay romantic comedy or studio-led film yeah. uh, in 2022, that's pretty um, uh, crazy to think of. Where do you think where do you think we are in terms of Hollywood now, 16 years later, that, you know, you're in the business now almost 20 years and... Where do you think Hollywood is now in terms of the treatment of the LGBTQ community as actors? Are they getting better? Is it getting better, do you think? Or do you think there are still people, younger actors than you, who are going through what you went through back in the day? Oh, there, there definitely is. And that's really why I chose to write the book, because I, I knew that there was going to be kids coming up who, who would want to hear some of the struggle or also just want to hear that they're not alone. And, and I really wish that I had something like this growing up. Um, but yeah, I definitely, there's a long way to, long, long way to go for Hollywood. Um, it's, it is nice that we're starting to see a lot more representation of, of people that don't just look like me. And, you know, there's still a long way to go. I suppose when you think of the days of Rock Hudson and mm. how he was forced yeah. in and he could never come out, and then you look at the Netflix series Bridgerton, the, this the latest series who has uh, the, the, their main their main uh, uh, main lead is a gay man as well. So I mean, yeah. the, the, it's getting easier, but it's still not as it should be. But I mean, tell us about the good the good things coming up for you now. Tell us about um, what's next in the pipeline. Well, we have the Team Wolf movie coming out on Paramount mm. Plus. Uh, I think at the very end of this year, they won't tell me the date yet because I'll tell <laughs> tell everybody. Yeah, uh, you'll tell we're us. going to do reshoots in a couple of days, and then I have another movie coming out that, towards the end of the year that's going to get announced pretty soon. So yeah, hmm. and I'm working on another, uh, maybe another work of. Writing, good man. Oh, good work writing. <laughs> well, let's Would hope you don't have to. Factor fiction. <laughs> well, let's just hope you don't have to repaint the apartment as often as you did during the writing of the first book. Uh, listen, Colton, yeah, it's been great I'm catching seven up with times. you. Continued success, and we're looking forward to seeing the reboot of Teen Wolf. Best of luck with everything in the future, my friend. Lovely talking to you. Thank you for you. having me. A pleasure. Bye.